For today's skill review, we're going to talk about chest decompression, specifically with adults. Before we begin talking about performing chest decompression, we need to understand what a normal respiratory and ventilatory cycle is. During inspiration, the diaphragm pulls down and the rib cage expands, creating a negative vacuum in the thoracic cavity and lungs. This draws air in. During exhalation, the diaphragm relaxes and the rib cage contracts, creating a positive pressure, forcing air out of the chest cavity. Whenever the lungs, the thoracic cavity, are unable to maintain these positive and negative pressures or there's a hole in the system is when we have a life-threatening event. A pneumothorax is when there is pressure inside the chest cavity preventing the lungs from expanding. This can be spontaneous, called a simple pneumothorax, or it can be caused by blunt or penetrating trauma. Signs and symptoms can include chest pain and difficulty breathing. Left untreated, it can progress to a tension pneumothorax, which is a life-threatening condition. In the civilian pre-hospital settings, we do not routinely perform chest decompressions on patients with a pneumothorax until it becomes life-threatening. Standard treatment for patients with a pneumothorax is to sit them upright or a position of comfort and provide oxygen therapy. Tension pneumothorax is when the pressure in the chest cavity becomes so great that it causes pressure on the mediastinum, which puts pressure on the organs inside, such as the heart and the great vessels. The heart doesn't like being under pressure, so this causes a decrease in cardiac output and sends the patient into shock. This is a life-threatening condition and requires immediate intervention. Signs and symptoms include chest pain, difficulty breathing, unequal chest rise and fall, absent or decreased breath sounds on the affected side, JVD, tracheal deviation to the side of the affected collapsed lung. We will also see signs of poor perfusion like clammy, pale, diaphoretic, or cyanotic skin, low blood pressure, and altered mental status. A needle decompression should be performed for a patient who is suffering from a tension pneumothorax or if you have a patient in traumatic arrest with signs of chest trauma and you suspect a tension pneumothorax or have resistance when ventilating. The equipment needed for this is going to be a cleansing solution such as betadine or an alcohol prep. You're also going to need a 10 to 14 gauge IV catheter that is 3 and a quarter inches in length for an adult. When selecting your IV catheter, you can use commercially made devices such as the ARS needle. You can also use a 10 to 14 gauge IV catheter. Now, if you're using the IV catheter, make sure you have one that has an air filter that can be removed. That way, when you actually puncture the thoracic cavity, you can allow the air to escape. To begin, ensure your patient is being adequately oxygenated and ventilated. Make sure they are receiving high flow oxygen therapy via non rebreather mask or assisted ventilations with oxygen via BVM. Locate your landmarks. For this video, we're going to use the anterior chest placement. We're going to use the second intercostal space. Find your first rib, first intercostal space, then your second intercostal space, and we're going to go midclavicular. There are multiple sites that may be used as an alternative, including the fifth intercostal space around the midaxillary line. The reason we go above the rib is because below we're avoiding veins, arteries, and nerves. After locating your landmarks, the second intercostal space, midclavicular, go ahead and cleanse your site using an alcohol prep or betadine wipe. You're then going to want to prepare your IV catheter by removing the air filter if it's appropriate. For an ARS needle, you're not going to need to do this step. At a 90 degree angle, with the bevel riding the top of the third rib, advance the needle until you hear air releasing. If you do not hear air releasing, advance the needle until the hub is against the skin. Once you have advanced the needle, leave it in place for several seconds allowing the air to escape. Then remove the needle, leaving the catheter in place. After an appropriate length of time, reassess your patient looking for signs of improvement. Improved breath sounds, equal chest rise and fall, lung sounds are improving, and blood pressure is improving. If your patient deteriorates and you suspect a recurrence of the tension pneumothorax, leave the original catheter in place and perform a second decompression lateral to the first. Here's a close-up example of the bevel riding the top of the third rib. You're going to advance the IV catheter until you hear the air escape, and then advance the catheter until the hub is against the skin. Once you've advanced the catheter, make sure you dispose of the sharp appropriately. A couple of final reminders. Make sure when you're decompressing, you're decompressing the affected side. Also make sure you're using a 10 to 14 gauge needle, 3 and a quarter inches in length. Make sure you're only decompressing patients with a life-threatening tension pneumothorax or a traumatic arrest patient with signs of chest trauma. Well, that's it for today's skill review. Thanks for stopping by. Make sure you click like and subscribe.